Thank you. So I break it up and do jumping jacks. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Very he looks scared. Very, very scared. You're not bad enough there. So I don't know, I'm brand new to the Rochester community. So my business is for Body Shop Fitness. I'm a virtual trainer and nutritionist. So that is a little bit about my business title. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background about me though before I get dive into that. Cool. All right. Hey, Tuck got it. Perfect. So I just got my undergrad as an exercise physiologist. I've been a personal trainer since I was 13 years old, actually. And I've also been working with football teams and softball teams growing up in high school. So I created their programs in high school. I had a little niche of it already. And I'm also a nutritionist as well on NASM1. And I also compete in bodybuilding shows. So that's a little bit goes hand in hand with the nutrition aspect. And also I'm a dog mom now. So I have a little baby Corgi, it's about this big. So that's a little bit about my background. Let's dive into the business end. So what is virtual training? So in this photo you can see that there is a TV and I'm actually training somebody from, that person's from India actually, across the world. So it's live and it's customized and convenient and you can train anywhere. So the session is customized to the individual. So say somebody has a hip flexor problem, I can fix that and then they can do a proper lunch. So if you don't have a personal trainer doing that, you don't know, you're just doing an at-home workout. So that's why it's so unique. And then train anywhere in the world. I've been to the Bahamas, I've been to Cancun, all these different places. I utilize what the person has and then we go from there because just learning to be scrappy and working on the fly getting to work on it, that actually is a fun aspect and you learn more, you don't get bored with training. So that's the virtual side of my business. There's a flexible dieting side. And what I've learned over the years, people don't like to diet at all. And if they do, it's for a month or three. You want this to be a maintainable lifestyle that you can live for years on end, right? So, I came up with menu plans and portion plans and also macro plans. Macro plans are calorie counting. That is the extreme learning. So, you go from portion plans to menu plans to then learning the calorie counting. There's all these different levels to level the person up. Because everybody is at different points of their journey. So that's what I've learned over the years. And what menu plans are, think of like, you want Chipotle, right? <clears throat> so what I do is I calculate all the calories and the protein, carbs, and fats. And then you just scale the food, cook the food, and eat the food. And that's all you have to worry about. I do everything else. And then you reach your goal of fat loss or muscle gain. So, and the portion plans would be very simplified to you have broccoli, chicken, and sweet potatoes. Or if you like cereal, you can do that too. What I found is adding in things that people love, like donuts, for example, they stick to the plan very, very well. It's that one thing that you're like, oh, I can't live without Reese's Puff cereal into the plan. I really like to talk about this because a lot of people bring up Peloton. It's Peloton's like the bike that you purchase and it's a trainer on the other end. Well, the trainer is a lot. They can't really say, hey, you're doing this incorrectly, let's fix it. So that's the big thing about it. And I love the company, but everybody is different. So that's what makes my company a little bit more unique in that sense. Recorded videos. So YouTube videos are great, but it's the same thing. And also, who's to tell you're actually doing the video? You might be watching it, but you might be sitting on the couch eating potato chips instead of doing your at-home workout, right? So it's a huge accountability factor as well because you do have an appointment and you have to get it done with the trainer or you have to reschedule it, so. And also a cookie cutter. None of these plans are ever cookie cutter. Everybody is different and 
the trainer has to realize that and work with specific disabilities or allergies, things like that. So then the plan is unique to the person and then they can reach their goal with all these little restrictions that they have. Also all those dollar signs. So personal training is not really a need in a sense. It is to a lot of people, but um, it should be a little bit more spendy if you're buying a person to help you maintain a lifestyle for years on end. That's why buying somebody for a month isn't going to be very helpful because we haven't maintained or made new habits to even pass on throughout our lifestyle. Since when we're super stressed out, we always rely on the habits that we've built. We have to break those habits down and, and have new habits to even carry on through our life. So break old traditions and new ones and that we can carry on our new lifestyle. And my last time, what can this community do for me? Get the word out. So virtual training, is, it's there, but it's not working out in a sense. So people will talk to you on the screen, like, hey, how are you, how are you doing? But I believe in, if you need to talk to me, that's great, but let's get a workout in too so you're progressing towards your goal. Just talking about, yeah, I screwed up my binge date, that's perfect, but let's get your mind right and keep going. So, and over here, this is a, a two month period between that, that's 20 pounds. And what I truly believe in is not losing fat and muscle, which all these cookie cutter diets that you've seen, they want you, yeah, let's drop weight because that's what everybody wants, right? So I'm gonna give you, uh, sell you what you want, but give you what you need. So we wanna keep the muscle so we get that nice sexy tone look so we look good naked, right? And then not have like chicken wings or look like a potato, okay? All right, thank you guys so much. Do you have any questions? So over the years, I've seen a lot of that. I've worked at Anytime Fitnesses, and they use like the heart rate monitors, things like that. And you can pretty much tell by the emotional reactions to what people are doing, how hard they're working, or if they can't do anymore. And constantly I'm asking, hey, how do you feel? Are you okay? And if you wanted to monitor yourself and have it on hand, like a Fitbit, perfect. I have some clients that do that. Um, I would imagine that you have a, um, for people introduced to your program, uh, that you have a whole health, um, uh, health and wellness, or a health um, 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 survey or something done uh, so that you know exactly what the health problems are um, that you're dealing with while doing this plan so it, it helps, helps with the health problem. Let's say overweightness, um, but they have diabetes, you know, and the overweightness might be the cause for the diabetes. You know, but you need to know all that information to heal that person so that they're effective to heal the disease plus um, get into a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. So there's a thing in the personal training world called, called the PAR and u So it's a list of questions before they even step into training with somebody, for example. I use that and I also have my own questions that I've gone over the years what I need to ask somebody in order to find triggers of what might be happening if they have high blood pressure. Things like that, in case, do they get chest pains while they're working out? Because if they do, man, they gotta get cleared. Because I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. So I'm thinking about the liability a little bit, but their health records. Do you have access to that at all? Their I, health records at all at this point or not? Um, I have to get permission from them before anything. And then also once that's passed, it depends on the situation. So if it's like that, I do work with the doctors a little bit. That's what I like. Saying. Hey, uh, Susie has this goal, and I really want to help her. I need to help her. What restrictions does she have? Right. What do I have to work on for her? And how you start slow and maybe work it up if they've got a heart condition or something like that. So you don't, it's not a liability back to you. Yep, absolutely. For uh, 
first, how many how many uh, customers do you have that you work with, and then for the technology side of things, do you have any standard things that you use to be able to keep communicating with them, or do just people show up with whatever they have to be able to connect to you uh, and do the live session? Okay, so my undergrad, I had max capacity at 20. I was also prepping for two bodybuilding shows, so you can imagine that my plate was pretty much full with just 20 clients, and I really wanted to expand, but bodybuilding takes a huge toll on your body, and after that show, I got my undergrad, all the shows done, I literally came down here, I was like, I am so bored right now. Like, are you kidding me? I can go to like 100 clients and be fine. Like. So I'm looking to just expand. And with this community versus, I was living in River Falls, Wisconsin. That is, think of like 10,000 people. So not very big at all. So definitely at technology, I use Zoom calls. So, and I find that to be the most effective. I tried Skype and laughed because it was just ridiculous. Apologize to the client, reschedule, like, all right, let's do Zoom. And it's been pretty much flawless besides teaching I'm learning to write out what the client needs to do for steps for Zoom, like download it and okay, make sure the screen's on, the voice is on, things like that. And after I did that, it's pretty much flawless right now. What's the uh, pricing model if you want to be a client? So right now, I'm actually pivoting a little bit just because getting out in the community. And also, I think you all can agree, know your worth. So I have an introductory package of $50, which is two 15-minute sessions and also a macro-based plan. And what I do is look at scheduling is a huge part of anything in the fitness and nutrition industry. If you're going to succeed, you got to have a plan. So that's what I work on right now with these clients for a month. And again, it's just two 15-minute sessions with the Zoom calls, so they get a little bit used to it and understand the process a little bit better and see what I can do for a month. But the pricing breakdown is, so nutrition is really important, right? And the workout planning is really important. So I don't sell my packages of just virtual training separate. So if you don't have that nutrition, you're gonna fail. I'm sorry, that's just what's gonna happen. And I'll be straight up with you about it. So $200 a month for the online coaching aspect and then you include sessions after that. So 30 minute sessions is $25 per session. I sell them in packages of four, eight, and 12 monthly. The constant contact and accountability really, really helps with the person. So starting out, I would recommend that two or three a week just to get everything down. Hey, how's it going? Let's do a workout as well to get that factor in. So think of just like personal training models. Yes, I took it from the personal training models and add it on the nutrition side. Um, I'm an educator, a vocational educator who works for education, um, uh, moving out to Southeast Minnesota. And um, um, are you, I know you're new to the community, and you talked about that you were in schools and you helped with the athletic. Um, do you see yourself uh, participating in a community base um, within the Southeast uh, Minnesota uh, to uh, connect with schools and work with their athletic programs? No. <laughs> Here's why. So I'm an athlete myself, and I've trained bodybuilders, I've trained wrestlers, everything. They're all motivated, you guys. I don't want that. I want the people that need the motivation and the help. I want to find the drive in you and what what your why is for why you're doing this. It could be just to follow and run around after your kids in the yard. That would be more inspirational. I love the transformation of seeing the mind and body transform, not just the physical aspect of it at all. So once you get to your 100 clients, um, do you, have you thought about scaling? Like, do you want to scale? And if you don't, that's a totally, I think, real, you know, reasonable thing if you don't want to go beyond 100. But once you get there, how do you scale? Because it sounds like you, your brand is around the live video. So do you, are you interested in recording it or do you, you know, subcontract other individuals? Um, what are your thoughts around that? Man, if you would have known me before this, <laughs> you would know this answer. So I've been looking at scaling for a long time, but I had to get that undergrad and get all the stuff done and you know, it just takes time and steps. And I had a business grant when I was 
that I was doing that also while doing the shows and doing my undergrad and everything. And I got approved. I talked to a lawyer one day to make sure that everything was covered. And he's like, you know, I'm gonna give you a grant. So I've been working on the business model for scaling and I want subcontractors for me, I want a marketer, all these different steps to just branch out. What I visualize, I visualize every day of what's gonna happen. And it's just these virtual training studios, also in-house, like in Rochester, adding on personal training as well, because that would be a huge market, things like that. But I can see it, it's going global. Like, I have one client in India, but it's global already. <laughs> so the merch just gotta get out. Sure. Sure. 